A year ago this week, Texas saw some of its coldest temperatures in three decades. Meteorologists predicted the cold snap well in advance, but the power plants, they froze up and the grid went down. The Weather Channel's chief environmental correspondent, Dave Malakoff, talked to Texans still in a state of power outrage and went all the way to the nation's capital to get answers. In February of 2021, temperatures plunged to historic lows in Texas. Extreme cold sent millions rushing to heat their homes. But the demand was too high for the energy grid. Nearly 250 people died in the state, mostly as a result of prolonged exposure to the cold. The Texas power grid, this right here, had a multi-system failure. It was awful. The power stayed out for a week, and you knew it was cold. And to be in a cold old house, that's awful. The old house Deborah Brow lives in is in the historically black Houston suburb of Independence Heights. My great grandfather came here in 1924. Many of these homes have the same old bones and rickety pipes they started with 100 years ago. Today's community leaders like Tanya DeBose are fighting for some bare minimum safety upgrades. Not many people have had like a major overhaul of replacing pipes and electricity in their homes. So in most of your low income communities of color are usually the ones that are really very vulnerable. Some Independence Heights homes were flooded out by the relentless rains of Hurricane Harvey back in 2017. And then again in 2021, when Texas power plants froze, people lost power and their icy pipes burst. The freeze, February freeze. I don't know if everybody is as interested in this power grid thing. But after what we've gone through, they should be. To understand why Deborah Brow's house flooded on a freezing day, you need to understand how a home is powered in the United States. A power plant uses anything from a flowing river to a nuclear reaction to create high voltage electricity. That power flies long distances over a grid in a fraction of a second towards your neighborhood where the voltage is lowered enough to safely enter your house and turn on the heat. It's that last part of the trip where 92% of power failures happen. You see, if one power plant goes down, you can always get power from another part of the country. But here in Texas, that's not an option. When power plants freeze here, almost everyone's heat goes out. Because decades ago, Texas chose to stay on their own electricity island. Uh, officials wanted to avoid federal regulation and so set up a grid entirely within the boundaries of the state of Texas in order to avoid uh, come triggering kind of federal oversight. After all, this is Texas. Some utilities don't want the federal government telling them how much to charge or spend, things that could potentially impact their revenue. And because the Texas energy industry is so big, they've been able to do this for decades. Texas uh, notoriously independent and wanting to do it our own way. And, you know, that's had some advantages, but also it uh, has uh, came back to bite us, you know, when we really could have benefited from connecting our grid to the rest of the country. Luke Metzger is one of the leading voices trying to reconnect Texas to the eastern and western grids that serve the rest of the country. So while cold states like Minnesota and hot states like Arizona have federal regulations that force them to prepare the power plants for extreme weather, Texas doesn't have those rules. We talked to one of your representatives in Congress, Dan Crenshaw. I just wanted to show you this interview and get your reaction to what he said here. Is there any idea of integrating your grid into a more national grid yeah. so you don't have the problem like you had last winter? That, that wouldn't have solved our problem. There's just not a single expert that would that would think that that connecting our grid to the rest of the country would have solved that problem because Oklahoma didn't have power, New Mexico didn't have power, Louisiana didn't have power. Yeah, oh, so many things wrong with what the congressman said. Many experts have shown um, that if we just have the transmission lines connecting with uh, the rest of the country, there was uh, surplus power available 
actually both within Texas uh, that we couldn't get to our cities because of lack of transmission, but then certainly uh, outside of Texas. They had no one to connect to. They were like an island all on their own when the power went out, but every other state was able to keep their power on. It didn't just hit Texas, it went across. But, but Texas was the one that was froze. While the pipes were bursting here in Houston. It's a disaster. Luke Metzger, his wife and three little kids were freezing inside their newer Austin home for three long days. Covered our windows with every blanket we could find. And then at night, yeah, we just all, you know, all five of us, you know, crawled into uh, to bed together, you know, huddling together. Uh, to try and stay warm. We could have been able to help, but right now that doesn't happen because they are, they ref, they don't want to be a part of the federal system. So As it stands now, even U.S. Energy that, Secretary uh, Jennifer Granholm can't help fix future. what could happen again tomorrow. How do you, as the Department of Energy here in Washington, D.C., do anything about what is happening down in Texas where they have a freak snowstorm and then everything yeah. goes down? We want to be able to help them. Her Republican opponents think more regulation on the existing grid is not the answer. Instead, Representative Crenshaw told me the answer is actually more power plants to increase capacity. So we haven't built new nuclear plants, we haven't built new coal plants, barely built any new gas plants. We've built a ton of new wind. They are producing a huge amount of wind and solar. And for them to be able to export that, it's an economic opportunity for them. The ethos of Texas, I understand, is that we're going to go it on our own. I just hope that when the leaders say that, that they're thinking about the folks on the ground who have to suffer, because these freak storms are only going to continue to accelerate. I'm angry, too, at a time when essential services were needed the most, the system broke. Last summer, Texas Governor Greg Abbott signed two laws that would force the Electric Reliability Council of Texas, known as ERCOT, to winterize. Although ERCOT projects that if we have a repeat of what uh, happened in February, uh, we're definitely going to have blackouts again. So. so here we go again. So here we go again. I would like to see something done about that. Even now, some people in Independence Heights are living in trailers or in homes with pipes that are literally stitched together with duct tape. We are just a microcosm of many other communities across um, the state still now dealing with damages that happened because of winter storm Uri. All Texas homes are not equal. Newer homes with better pipes are already prepared to survive the next freeze out. But here in Independence Heights, as the name implies, they may have to end up facing the cold on their own. When you have a city like Houston that is calling itself the most diverse city in America, you can't call yourself diverse if you don't make sure that there's equity in all of the resources that are available to everybody. Lot to unpack there, right? Uh, just to be fair, we talked to ERCOT Media Relations earlier this week, and they told us they've made a number of upgrades as directed by Governor Abbott and the state legislature. One of those upgrades, Ken and Karen, is actually putting these what amount to backup systems on site where they have a backup tank. So if the freezing pipe cuts them off from the gas line, they can just switch to the backup tank and theoretically keep the lights on. All right, you, Dave, really one of the, the biggest worries that we all have here in North Texas is this might happen again. So is what's being done by ERCOT and the state oh, yeah. enough? Well, you know, I was sitting there in downtown Dallas uh, last month, earlier this month, when we actually had that mini freeze which wasn't the same as last year's freeze so we did get a kind of a dry run of this but we didn't get the actual test of multi days of frozen temperatures where you'd have a real tax of the system so they have made those upgrades but is it enough we'll have to see as the next big icy storm comes into north texas yeah, that'll be the real test. Yeah. Uh, Dave Malkoff, thank you very much for that very thorough and inside look uh, into something that we're not going to soon forget no. anytime around here.